of or pertaining to the distinction between right and wrong or good and evil in relation to an action, volition, or character of responsible beings. This is the definition of morality according to the Oxford English Dictionary. On August 14th of 1971, the Stanford Prison Experiment was underway at Stanford University. The overseer of this experiment and the prison superintendent was Philip Zimbardo, along with his fellow colleagues Craig Henney, W. Curtis Banks, and David Joppe. 24 male college students were chosen out of 75 volunteers to be paid $15 a day to be a part of a prison simulation. Nine were chosen to be guards, nine were chosen to be prisoners with six alternates. All prisoners were arrested at their homes for armed robbery and burglary, told their rights spread eagle in a handcuff to be hauled into the back of a police car and sent straight to Stanford County Jail. They were all subjected to a uniform, a simple beige dress with an ID number and a cap made from a woman's stocking. During this experiment, it was important to degrade the prisoners by stripping them of their manhood and their identity. The guards also had a uniform, one that they were told to wear with pride along with black shades that took away their humility and further severed the emotional connection between the two groups. They had no training, but were instead told that they could do whatever they pleased and were actually told that they could degrade the prisoners themselves. Now, with all of this background information, you might be thinking, why is this important? Why should some science experiment matter to me? Who is this girl and why does she care about this? She's kind of freaking me out. The fact is that this simple experiment would influence psychologists' idea of the human mind and the way that we think about ourselves. Now, before I go further, and in case you're still confused on how a simple experiment could go wrong, let me leave you with this simple fact. The Stanford prison experiment was scheduled to last two weeks. The abuse against the prisoners got so bad that they had to end the experiment after six days. According to the official side of the experiment, the purpose was to understand the development of norms and the effects of roles, labels, and social expectations within a simulated prison environment. However, I think we're able to see more than just the insight of the harming psychological damage done within the prison system, and we're able to see the true ideologies that live within all of us. The prisoners were harmed, and there were many instances of showing rebellious nature and resistance against both the guards and the jail system itself. Not even 48 hours after the start of the experiment, the prisoners barricaded their cells. They began taunting the guards and they took off their caps. And by the fifth day, the prisoners had conducted an elaborate escape plan to free themselves. Though both of their uprisings were failures and were met with punishment, we're able to see that in a short span of time, the prisoners felt trapped and had a distinct primal sense and need for freedom. The guards were very, very harsh on the prisoners and gradually their abuse increased over time and it started to get out of hand, especially for John Wayne, the prison guard known for his lethal abuse of the prisoners and his Western cowboy personality. Wayne explained that he was conducting his own personal experiment, seeing how far he, he could go and really taking his role seriously. He explained that no one stopped him or objected to his actions, pushing him into his role even further. He devised horrible ways to despise the prisoners, and one of his orders ultimately led to the termination of the experiment as a whole. The guards had sprayed the prisoner with a fire extinguisher. They had used other harsh punishments like push-ups. They made sure to degrade the prisoners in horrible ways like stripping them of their manhood. And with that, Zimbardo ended the experiment. In 2008, he confessed, it wasn't until much later that I realized how far in my prison role I was at that point. And I was thinking more like a prison superintendent rather than a research psychologist. This experiment shows us how roles and labels in society affect us in our mental state and how we can begin to settle into a role so much that we begin to lose the sense of who we are. They suffered from de-individuation, acting with what they believed were normal for the roles that they played. They even felt that they would be positively recognized by Zambardo if they abused the prisoners. The guards were horrible to the prisoners, though it's scary to think that they're just ordinary people. In the beginning of the experiment, the thing that separated guards from prisoners was the simple flip of a coin. The fact is that none of these people were horrible or bad. 
The badge brought out the cruel and unusual side of the prisoners. The Stanford Prison Experiment has been both highly praised and criticized for not only its ethics, but its accuracy as well. In the beginning of the experiment, there were questions over the consent of the experiment, as the prisoners did not agree to be arrested at their homes, though the researchers believed that it would provide the same authentic shock that came with being arrested, arguably breaching their signed contracts. The prisoners were harmed in many ways through bursts of screaming, crying, and anger. Though in Zambardo's defense, he did not know that the prisoners would be harmed in any way. He still strongly argues that there were many benefits to the experiment, providing psychological insight and information about the human mind. One of the largest criticisms that Zambardo received was that the researchers gave specific instructions to the guards to abuse the prisoners, warping and distorting the data of the experiment. His reply? was simply that he did not give instructions on how to be an effective guard, only that they had to assert their authority and recreate certain negative emotions associated with being imprisoned. Whether you believe that the Stanford Prison Experiment is morally right or wrong, factually correct or incorrect, there's no denying that it revealed a truth about our personalities and our souls. I encourage you to do your own research and to look further into the experiment if you want to form your own opinion, taking a look at the official side of the experiment, reading the novel explaining data and research, or even watching the film by Kyle Patrick Alvarez. Zambardo explained in a figurette for the film, we all want to believe in the power of free will, that our decisions come from within, some magical place, that we choose our destiny and we take it. And it says, no, no, you take really good people and you put them in a really bad place and the goodness of the people crumbles against the power of the place. We as people have to recognize that with the bad group and with the wrong group of people, our decisions and the perception of ourselves and the world around us shifts to fit our circumstances. I myself, I'm going to further understand my own identity and acknowledge both the good and bad parts of my being. With that, I also have to evaluate the environments that I place myself in every day and understand how said environment changes me in any way. I'm going to see people not as entities of goodness or poorness, but as human beings who are puzzles with scattered pieces. We should all evaluate ourselves and see if we are who we truly are or what everyone expects us to be. Thank you. <laughs>